Okay, so we now are going into the Bible study. We said today will be Bible study. Praise the name of the Lord. Our topic uh, for the month is God our helper, Jehovah Isa, E-Z-E-R, God our helper, El Isa, Jehovah Isa. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll quickly read our texts from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. And then we'll go into the study. As I said, it will be interactive. So I believe we have prepared the study. Um, as we said, we will look at Bible characters, Bible examples of people that God has helped. And we will learn from that the help of God that is available to us. So we can do the same and get the same help. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. He said, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. And you know, I will ask us to repeat this with me. So I will read that again. And when I say, what can man do to me? You know what to answer. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to read that again. And when I say, what can man do to me? And what will you answer? You will say, man can do me nothing. You will answer nothing. Hallelujah. For he himself, that's the almighty God himself, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What is your answer? Man can do me nothing. Nobody can do me anything. If God is for you, if God is for us, who can be against us? And God here has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will never leave you. No matter what it may seem like, no matter how troublesome and difficult that situation may be, know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Our God is faithful. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has promised, he will bring it to pass. And God has said here, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Repeat that with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Man can do me nothing. The Lord is my helper. God is my helper. Jehovah Isa is my helper. He is our helper. Man can do us nothing. You will see the end of November. You will see the end of December. And you will fulfill all the purpose of God for your life. Because God is your helper. God is my helper. God is our helper. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, we want to look at um, the topic, God, our helper. God, our helper. And we have said that we want to make this session interactive so people should prepare. Look at the four um, Bible characters that we discussed last week. Asa, as, uh, Uzziah, some people call him Uzziah. But if you remember that the father's name was Amaziah, then um, let me just call him Uzziah, okay, or Uzziah. Okay, Uzziah, and then David, and lastly, Paul. Of course, there are many people that God helped in the Bible. So we'll just look at these four, and you will see consistent things that they did to provoke the help of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll look at any of these four characters, and I will just give uh, people three minutes. Anybody who wants to speak, you just summarize what you have learned and give us some of the uh, points that you have learned. At the end of it, I have a couple of points that I will make and a few scriptures that we will read. There are very key things you need to know how to provoke the help of God as a son and a daughter of God. God has already said, according to this scripture, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will not leave you, brothers and sisters. God will not leave us. God will not leave me. Our God is good. Our God is loving. Our God is kind. He will not leave us. So we need to know how to provoke the help of God. Okay, so let's see the first hand. Who wants to go first? Anybody who wants to go first, just raise your hand. Okay. Sister Sedu has raised her hand. That is excellent. Please go ahead. 
Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here today. Um, thank you for the invitation. And um, I just want to speak about the character of David. He's my favorite character in the Bible, so much so that I named my second son David. And that's because he's a man that was mightily helpful by God. He embraced the help of God and he deeply loved God. From the time he was a teenager, from the time he was a boy, he was um, taking care of his father's sheep. He was the least in his family, but God saw him in his service and God anointed, sent Prophet Samuel to anoint him king, to become king over Israel. And over the, from the time he was anointed king to the time he became king, he, he, he really ascended that throne. It was more than 15 years. And during that period was the most trying period of his life. Because even though he had achieved so much and served his master Saul with all his heart, Saul hated him and it was all, he was always running. But he never forgot the grace of God and he never failed to ask for the help of God. God helped him to defeat all his enemies. And he eventually saw the promise of God fulfilled and became king of Israel. And his love for God was so deep that God promised David, ah, you, David, you, your descendant will, will always be a king on the throne in Israel. And even after um, David died and his son Solomon strayed, and God decided to divide the, the kingdom of Israel into two, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. God still said, because of David, your father, I will still give you one tribe to rule over. And so that he will fulfill the promise he made to David, which is that his, his descendant will always be upon the throne in Israel. And God ultimately fulfilled that promise in his son, Jesus Christ, by sending Jesus Christ, who is also referred to in the scriptures as the seed of David, to die for us. <clears throat> and through him, we have become members of the family of God. Thank you. Sorry, it's, it's so long, but I'm inspired by the character. So. Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. 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 That's uh, great. Thank you for that contribution. Anybody else wants to go? Next. This is what today is about. It's not just pastor preaching. It is us sharing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Next. Who wants to go next? Uh, this is Audrey. I'd like to take um, Paul. Um, for me, I know a lot of people might not consider Paul as, okay, a character that was helped by God. But for me, I think when you consider the life he lived when he was so, and then the fact that Jesus saw him in that state, and to me that was helped to bring him out of that his life and then bring him into the light. Jesus appeared to him personally. Jesus taught him personally. He's one of the apostles. The other apostles were taught by Jesus physically. The, uh, only Paul was taught supernaturally by Jesus. You know, to me, that's help. That's that's like the greatest help that I can receive for God to see me in my state, despite my other things in my, you know, social life, which are also important. But for God to see somebody who is in who is a good person, probably or maybe not even good, but doing something out of ignorance and helping you and bringing you out of darkness into light and they're now using you to now become so great to you the Paul ended up understanding Jesus so well and writing so much about him compared to others who were even physically with with Jesus to me that's that's help thank you thank you very much Audrey that's excellent contribution indeed I, I think you buttress uh, one point our sister said earlier about David he said God saw his service and you have again hit that point. You say God saw his state. God saw his state. Saw Saul doing things out of ignorance, thinking he was serving God with zeal, yet he was against God. And God helped him. A Saul, a persecutor of Jesus Christ, a persecutor of followers of Christ, turned around and became the apostle of Christ. Hallelujah. What a great help. Thank you for that contribution. Excellent. Excellent. Please, who else would like to go and which character would you like to speak about? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. I am Mrs. Allison. I want to talk about yourself as another character in the Bible that obtained the help of God. 
even when he was sold into slavery. It seems as if everything was against him. It was the help of God that made the brothers not to kill him. They decided to send him on to, uh, to Egyptians instead of the initial plan of killing him. It was the help of God to, that sustained him. Even when he got to the Potiphar's house, temptation came. God helped him to remember the fear of God. He said, I'm not going to do this wicked thing against God. And God sustained him. Even when they took him to prison, God's favor located him there. I saw it at the help of God, even in the prison. And from there, they brought him out. At the end of it all, God made him uh, a, a prime minister in a foreign land because God's help was upon him. Thank you for that contribution. Excellent again. Yes, indeed. God helped. And another salient point there, he said, Joseph said, I will not do this wickedness against God. Despite that, he went through a lot. He retained the righteous life. So righteousness is important. Righteousness is important. So, yes, I can see uh, Mrs. Comfort. <laughs> Apavio is uh, on. Okay, please, ma, go ahead and share with us. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Children of God, praise the Almighty Father. Amen. When I look at it, I guess the sister has said something about David. I had the opportunity and privilege to look at those four characters, as you have mentioned. Things that stood out and things that stand out for me, for David. Wow, a man after God's heart. Despite all his flaws, because of faith and zeal for God. So um, that makes David to be outstanding. In life, David become an example because each of us will go through life with various trials, problems, opposition. But when we know that we have God that will help us throughout our hardship, who will not look at our flaws, who will not close his eyes and count us? This gives us courage. It gives me courage to cry out to God, just like David. Thank you. Th thank you for that contribution. I think the network has been uh, 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 the problem, but we, we got the message. Yeah, despite David's flaws, God saw his heart, a man after God's heart. He loved God, just like uh, our sister said before, and God lifted him, God helped him. And David also humbled himself. Humility is important. Thank you. Um, okay. My beloved wife, Gloria's hand is up now. So we'll hear that. Mm -hmm. and after that, we will take a summary. Uh, so we'll, we'll listen to Gloria now. Please go ahead. Uh, let's mute the other lines. Let's mute the other lines. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to add my little bit here. A lot has been said, which is very good. From the characters we studied and even the one that was added here now, Joseph, we can see that something that is common among all of them from Asa to Uzziah to David to Paul and all even to Joseph, we see that they all sought the Lord. But even before that, you will see that in the opening of those passages, it was always mentioned that they feared the Lord. They did what was right in the sight of God. We've also mentioned that David was a man after God's heart in spite of his witnesses and all. So the point I want to bring out here is that we should make our ways right with God. We should seek that which is right in the sight of God to please him. And what really struck me here now is that they all sought the Lord. They cried for his help. They asked for his help. If we look at Psalm 34, that's not part of our stuff, but Psalm 34, verse 4, it was this same David that wrote this psalm. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Going through the scriptures, another word that we can interchange for delivered is that he helped me. And that is the theme and the message for which we are focused on this month. God helps anybody that seeks him, that asks for the help. So I, I had to ask myself, so it is guaranteed that once we seek the Lord, we ask for his help. He will help us. He will deliver us from all our fears, our troubles. Yes. Then I need to focus, or we now need to focus on how 
exactly do we need to seek after the Lord? Because there are a lot of people crying, God help me casually, but there must be a way that these people sought the Lord that made him hear them. And the answers were guaranteed. So I just want to encourage us in whatever way we can, let's seek the Lord. Let's try to really seek him and get his attention so that he can also give us our answers. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Excellent contributions. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's uh, uh, try and summarize all this with the few points that I have also noted. Yeah. So I want us to start with uh, um, the story of David, and we'll just look at a few scriptures, as has been mentioned. I want to title uh, this summary, The Do's and Don'ts. The do's and don'ts in getting God's help. If you want God to help you, you must pay attention to the do's and don'ts. And we have stated already a number of the do's. So I will run through using David to state the do's, and I will emphasize the don'ts using the other characters, the David and, and Paul. Uh, so if we go to First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 17. We remember, as uh, one of our sisters already said, that is where the Philistines came against the children of Israel. He said, now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sokoth, which belongs to Judah. The Philistines gathered against uh, the children of Israel. And you remember what the captain uh, the champion of the Philistines by name Goliath said, look at verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to move very quickly. So he said, and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. I defy the armies of Israel this day. So the Philistine was boasting of himself and he was looking at the army of Israel uh, as the ordinary people, you know, when men look at you, they see you, they don't know the God that is behind you. So the question is, are you for God or for yourself? Are you for God or for yourself? This is one question. Please really note this question down. Remember, we're talking about the do's and don'ts. If you want God to help you, you must pay attention to the do's or uh, the do's and don'ts, rather, the do's and don'ts. The first question I said ask is, are you for yourself or for God? Are you for God or for yourself? So you see here the champion of the Philistines. He was boasting of himself. And he was saying he would defy the armies of Israel. That's what he saw. But hear what David saw. In the same first Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. Look at it with me. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? That is the key. Number one, it must all be for the glory of God. Whatever you seek, brothers and sisters, must be for the glory of God. That is how to get God's help. You can pray for God to give you billions. It is the right thing to do. But let it be for the glory of God. You can ask God to give you the most handsome man on earth, the most handsome children, uh, our sons, the most uh, prosperous, whatever you want to ask. Good things are good. And our God is good and is willing to help us and give us good things in life. Oh, you want to be number one in the class. You want to be number one in that company. It, they are all good, but let your intention be for God's glory. So that is number one. Of course, preceding this is the assumption that we, you are already in Christ Jesus. I think the other speakers have said that. They talk about David loving God. So you have to already be, we're talking about um, God's help to his children. So you have already given your life to Jesus. You have become a child of God. So that's what is, is a given, that you are a child of God. You have given your life to God through Jesus Christ. 
So number one point, therefore, as a daughter of God, as a son of God, to provoke God's help, let your request, let what you desire, what you aspire for, be for God's glory. So seek God's glory. Even in your well-being, even in your physical well-being, material well-being, spiritual well-being, societal position, everything, seek God's glory. So that's point number one that we see from this story of David. So David was not looking at the army of Israel from the eye of uh, the ordinary human beings. Goliath thought uh, he would defy the armies of Israel. But David saw that this was against the army of God. The army of God. Number two points. We see in First Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 to 37. Have confidence in God. In God's faithfulness. Have confident, confidence in God. Have confidence in God and in his faithfulness. Let's read that 32 to 37. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with, with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he, a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said to David, go. And the Lord be with you. Wow. Imagine lion carrying a lamb in its mouth. And somebody is coming near that food in the lion's mouth. Ah, lion will turn that person into that food. But because God helped David. Hallelujah. And here you see David knew the God that he was serving. The Bible says they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Brothers and sisters, you have to know this, our God. You have to know your God. So I make some points very quickly through this. So have confidence in God, in your God, and in his faithfulness. Number 2A, testify of his faithfulness. Testify. You see here, David testified of God's faithfulness. Those things God have done for you, God have done for you before. Those things God has done for you before. Yes. Talk about it. Don't make boast of yourself, but make, make boast of what your God has done and what he can always do. Uh, to be, declare victory by faith, knowing his faithfulness. Declare victory. Declare victory. Don't keep your mouth shut. Declare the victory that God has given you. See here, David said, God who delivered me from the bear and the lion will deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hand. Three, take positive actions to achieve what you have declared. Take positive actions to de achieve what you have declared. This is where many people failed. They will say this thing, my God can do this, my God can do that. And then they will go and sit down. David didn't sit down. After David declared that God would give Saul into his hand, he went and he fought and God gave him victory. So fight for that thing you are looking for, you are asking God for. Work for it and use this next point that I'm going to make. Write it down and continually pray for God's help and thank God for every victory. Write down, write it down. That thing you are asking God to do for you, to help you as you are working with it, write it down and continually pray for God's help and thank God for every victory you see, every sign, every inch you move. Thank God for it. Back up your desires with the word of God and keep to the word of God. Even when provoked, keep to the word of God. These are the few points. If you take these and practice, you will see God's help manifest in your life in Jesus' name. So quickly, the don'ts. So those are the do's. The don'ts. Let's look at First Chronicles. Let's start with Asa. I think... 
um, this was also mentioned. If you start from verse 14, you understand who this Asa is. So Abia rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, reigned in his place. In his days, the land was quiet for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. I want to spend time on this one. People of God, don't play double games. Number one, don't, if you want God's help, is remove idolatry. Idolatry. Idolatry is killing the people of God. Many synagogues of Satan has now been camouflaging as the church of Jesus Christ. They carry items from their shrines and are sharing around for power, for miracles. Our God can help us. Our God can perform miracles. That's not in doubt at all. But don't share in idolatry. Idolatry is very dangerous. It's one of the greatest sins. God says, I am a jealous God. When anybody or a child of God gets involved in idolatry, it provokes God's jealousy. So idolatry is bad. Some of us, you will not go by yourself, but you give money. End of the year is coming. There are some people who are Christians. They will live in Lagos, but they will send money to that shrine in their villages so they can perform rituals for them. And after you will come and pray, God, heal me. God, help me. God hates idolatry. Idolatry is number one, don't. So you see here, Asa, the Bible says that he removed the altars of the foreign gods. You must remove the altar of the foreign gods. The Bible says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean things. Because of seeking power, because people are ignorant, they don't trust the faithfulness of God who, are, who is able to help them. Many people are drinking all manner of things, all manner of uh, uh, places, uh, 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 houses are being built and they are practicing all manner of things and they call it church. Do you and I don't know that we are the church? That the church is not a physical building? That the church is the body of Christ and is made up of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, whosoever comes into Jesus Christ and lives sin and lives iniquity and serves God. That is the church. The church is not building. We all know this. But we behave totally differently from this understanding of the truth of the word of God. Leave idolatry. Your God is able to help you. And I say it boldly again. If there is any problem in life that you have, that God cannot solve it. God cannot help you. There is no one else that can help you. And I know that God can help you. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. There is nothing impossible for my God. There is nothing impossible for God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth. Number one, don't, is idolatry. Let's look at a few scriptures. Let's follow through and go to uh, Uzziah, as most people like to call him, Uzziah. Uh, Uzziah. Uzziah. So Uzziah was marvelously helped. Look at verse uh, 6. The same thing Uzziah did. In fact, let's look at it quickly from verse 1. Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king. Instead of his father, Amaziah, he built Elad and restored it to Judah after the king rested with his father. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father, Amaziah, had done. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Verse 6. Uh, now, he went out, made war against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jap Japne, and the wall of Ashdod. And, the, and he built cities around Ashdod and among 
the Philistines. Look at verse 7. God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived there. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a man, the Bible says that he was marvelously helped. He was marvelously helped. Let's jump, jump to verse uh, 14. He says, Then Uzziah prepared for them, for the entire army, shields, up, spears, helmet, body armor, bows, slings to cast stones. 15. And he made devices in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men to be on the uh, towers and the corners, to shoot arrows and light stones. So his fame spread far and why? For he was marvelously helped till he became strong. He was marvelously helped till he became strong. That was Uzziah. But look at from verse 16 what this same Uzziah did. Oh, God will help you. And you see here, God helped this man in the areas of invention. So God can help his people in any way, in all aspects. God can help you in your job, give you special skills. God can help you in your business, give you special skills. To understand our business. To prosper. Our God will prosper us. You don't need to go to any shrine. You don't even need any lie of anointing oil on your head. Anointing oil is meant for people that are sick. People are being deceived around today with all manner of anointing oil. There is so much mixture of Judaism and Christianity that these days is difficult for Christians to know the difference. That's a teaching for another day. Let's focus on today. You are a child of God. That's my simple message and your God can help you. If God cannot help you, no man can help you. And your God will help you. So this same Uzziah, verse 16, after he became marvelously helped and he became so strong, verse 16, he said, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. So, idolatry. Number two point here is pride. So you can already see pride there. So I will come back to pride. But let me, let's finish with this idolatry. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 14 because I've just talked about how Christians are mixing all manner of things these days. And people are no more conscious, people are no more careful, and people are being deceived. God is able to help you. The creator of the sun, the moon, the stars is your father. The owner of the universe is your father if you have come into God. Have faith in God. Seek him. Search his word and his promises that he has given to you. And have confidence in him. He will come through for you in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, so that you won't say we were looking at only Old Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, look at the scripture. Verse 14 quickly, and then we will jump because of time. Verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. This is Paul said, flee. Flee from idolatry. Flee. Flee from idolatry. Let's jump so verses 20 and 22. 20. He said, rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. 22. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Idolatry provokes God's jealousy. Brothers and sisters. I said, I want to deal with this one. So we cannot pretend. God, God knows. God sees and knows our heart. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and then 16 to 17, you will see this same warning about idolatry. But let's quickly look at Exodus 25. You remember Exodus 25. That's the commandment. So you already know that. So Exodus 34, 14. Exodus 34, 14. Maybe I'm, I'm rushing off now. You can read all the others. So I'll just look at Exodus 34, 14. Exodus 34, 14. It says, For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. The one whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God. He hates idolatry. 
So no matter, even if they put knife in your neck, don't go. I will praise the name of the Lord. So number two is pride. I've talked about Uzziah. The other scripture is 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. You know that scripture very well. The pride of life. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. I want us to read that whole uh, scripture. 1 John chapter 2. Let's read 15 to 17. He said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the loss of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, just for today, because of time, number three, don't. If you want God to help you. You must pay attention to the do's and don'ts. And I've told us the do's. As sons and daughters of God, your father is ready to help you. And here are the don'ts. Number three, don't. Laziness. Laziness. That thing that looks like a play for some people. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Very quickly, write it down so you can read them for yourself. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse uh, verse 18, he said, because of laziness, the building decays, and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Like I told us in the do's, I say, write down and continually pray for God's help and thank God for every victory. Then back up your desires with the word of God and with actions, with actions. Take positive actions. Lazy people will keep saying, I am seeking the will of God. The will of God has been revealed in the Bible. Whatever is good is the will of God. Go ahead and do it, except God tells you don't. People will sit down for years praying. They say they are seeking the face of God to hear the voice of God. If you are a son of God, you don't need years to hear the voice of God. God speaks all the time. It is you who doesn't hear uh, the word, who doesn't hear God. So it's not as though God hasn't spoken and the will of God has been revealed in the Bible. Take positive action. Laziness is creating a lot of problems for many people. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Father buttresses this script, this word. There the Bible says, the hand of the diligent will rule, by, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. To forced labor. The same Proverbs Chapter 12, if you jump to verse 27, it says, The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is a man's precious possession. So diligence is required, children of God, for you to see your God, your helper, manifest in your life. When he wakes you up at 5 a.m. to pray, get up and pray. Don't be lazy because he knows why he wants you to pray at that time. There are many scriptures to refer to. You remember Matthew chapter 25, verses 26 through 29. The uh, servant that was given one talent who went and dug the ground and buried it. When the master came, he said, you lazy. La he said, you wicked and lazy servant. Wicked and lazy servant. And he was condemned. To round off, let's look at Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus is before Philemon. Titus chapter 1. Verse 12 is our anchor verse. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy glutons. Lazy glutons. Those who are lazy will tend to glut around, glut about, and be looking for who to just uh, help them. And that's why many people are turning the altar of God to merchandise these days. Turning the altar of God to a place where they will raise money and make money. 
But don't worry yourself, brothers and sisters. You be a child of God and follow the way of God. God knows those who are his. It is God that will judge all men. And this race is about eternal life. It's not about any man. That's why Jesus said that many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I cast out demons. I prophesied in your name. He said, I will look at them and say, depart from me. I know you not. You workers of iniquity. But let's focus, brothers and sisters, on why we are here. We're talking about God, our helper, Jehovah Isa, to provoke his help. Don't be lazy. If you are lazy today, cry to God, take away laziness from me. Let's read this whole scripture so you will see this point I made about the mix that people are mixing. Let's start from that verse 10. It says, for there are many. Many insubordinate, both idol talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Those of the circumcision. These were people in the church in the old days that Paul was talking about. He said, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of this honest gain. Can you see that? Dishonest gain. I saw a young lady. For, for, let me just share this. I know our time is up. A young lady, and she was carrying a ban in her hand with uh, some things inscribed on it and all that. So I asked the lady, I say, are you a Christian? She said, yes. I said, what does it mean to be a Christian? Of course, he said some stories. I said, why do you have the ban in your hand? He, this is what she answered me. So we know how far we have gone into idolatry. She said that she carries this ban so she can connect under the covering of her father in the Lord, her pastor. That with this ban, she is under the covering of her father in the Lord, her pastor. Mention this. Tell me what other form of idolatry you want. So people are carrying ban of their church so they can connect with the covering of their man of God. No more the covering of the almighty God. No more the covering of the blood of Jesus who died for you and me. Did man die for you? Did pastor die for you? A pastor may be anointed, but that he has become your covering. You have entered into idolatry. There is only one covering. That is God almighty. And his son, Jesus Christ, who died for you and me. So here, you can see, it's in Old, New Testament, not Old Testament. It says, whose mouth must be stopped? Who subvert whole, house, whole households? Teaching things which they ought not. For the sake of dishonest gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy glutons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. If I didn't read it in New Testament, you would have said, Pastor, now you can hear. So, Idolatry must stop in your life. Cry unto your God. He is able to help you. Come out from amongst them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. He said, and I will be your God. And I will be your father. This is where we want to draw. The close. Uh, draw the teaching to a close. And we want to pray. We want to agree. Heavenly Father, thank you for how you have helped us today. Thank you for teaching us your word. And thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for delivering us from the power of darkness and translating us to the kingdom of the Son of your Lord, where Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, rules and reigns. He is our King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, you have made us to reign with him as kings and priests. We are so grateful and so thankful to you. Father God, Today we agree as your children, as your sons and daughters, and we ask, Father, help us 
Lord, in whatever way these your children need help, Father, send us help. In this year, 2020, Lord, help us. That by the time this year ends, we will look back and say, hitherto has the Lord helped us. That you have been our Ebenezer, our rock of help. Thank you, our Father. Glory be to your holy name. Help us, O oh God, with the greatest help of remaining faithful to you, remaining in Christ, and living this eternal life that you have given to us till the end. And to you, our God, be all glory. Let our lives please you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you mightily. And thank you for being part of this program, this teaching session today. And please do feel free to join us on Wednesday uh, for prayer. We pray for 30 minutes from 6 to 6.30. God bless you.